guys, look at that. That's amazing. Uh-huh. Wow, look over there. Have you guys seen anything as massive as that? Great. Those cliffs are huge. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Well, we're here. Looks like everyone else just got here too. It's time to look up. There's more to life than what's on your screen. Go off-road on the adventure of a lifetime and experience the greatness of God's love. My God is strong and will never let go of me. Our God is great. Our God is great. He's an awesome God. Bigger than my wildest dreams. Monumental love. Eternal love for you and me. Because He's an awesome God. Explore colorful canyons of the Southwest from a rock-solid faith and discover that God is monumental. All right. Well, good morning, Delphi United Methodist Church. Uh, I invite you to stand hey, you guys, with us. look at that. And, uh, we are going to begin amazing. to praise our uh -huh. monumental God. Whoa, look over there. There's a grace where the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me was another in the waters, holding back the seas. And then I ever need reminding of how I've been set free. There is a cross that bears the burden, where another died for me. There is another in the fire. Left for dead beneath the water. I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore. Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I won't bow to the things of this world. And I know. And will be through it all. So 
what lay in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. I know I will never be alone. There'll be another in the fire standing next to me. There'll be another in the waters holding back the sea. what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain stand fast and let my heart learn when you speak a word it will come to pass. Where is your faithfulness to me? Is your faithfulness to me? From the rising sun to the setting same, I will praise your name. Where is your faithfulness to me? Though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Your history can prove there's nothing you can't do. You're faithful and true. Though the storm may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steady.
you are holy God, and thank you for who you were yesterday, today, and who you will be forever for those of us who trust and love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks. You may be seated. All right, gang, it's a great day to be at Delphi United Methodist Church. Amen? All right, it's good to be here. I want to just do a quick uh, transition to our mission team. Uh, they are returning from Belize, and they're going to have some things to share with you. And uh, before they come up, I want to be able to uh, offer us a prayer and remind us of why we're here. Um, we have a lot of good things that are happening and taking place in the church, but I want you to really hear from them. They have so many good things to share, not only in what took place in the field, but more importantly about your walk with Jesus Christ and how you can continue to do that. So we've had a good chance to do that, and we want to continue that process uh, today. So let's just have a word of prayer, and then I'll invite them up here this time. Holy God, it's good to be in your presence. It's good to sing songs of worship. In fact, Lord, I was almost ready to tell the praise team, keep going for another 20 minutes. Uh, but they would have been a little bit shocked by that. But still, may that praise continue to inhabit our hearts. May we continue to praise you every moment and every day. For we know that, that when we come to worship, we are formed into who you want us to be by turning our hearts towards you and submitting ourselves to your lordship. God, we come to submit ourselves to your forming and shaping spirit among us. For those who come today where their bodies are hurting, I pray you bring healing to them. For those who come today whose spirits are broken, Lord, restore them where they are. For those who come today looking for a new direction or trying to discover what's next, Lord, point the path for them. For those who come today and things are going in a good path and a good direction and they're just saying, thank you, Lord. Lord, reaffirm this praise that they have for them. God, I know that I cannot name every single thing that someone's going through when they come into this place, but you know what it is. So meet each person in their heart and mind where they are. And God, not only to meet each person in their heart and mind where they are, but also pull us and bind us and bring us together as a body of Christ, as a community of faith that worships you fully and completely in two worship services. Lord, I pray particularly for our upcoming missions that are happening, our vacation Bible school. I pray for our teen ministry camp that's going to be happening. I pray for uh, our food pantries. I pray for those other activities that will happen throughout the summertime, our July 4th outreach, our young adult outreach. Um, I pray for all those things that they would be indeed good places where we can be able to serve you. So God, Bind us together in one spirit, one mind, one heart, and one hope of what you want us to do and who you want us to be. We ask this all in the name of Christ, your Savior. Amen. I'd invite the mission team up here, and they're going to share a few uh, stories, I believe it is, and uh, have a video. And uh, also, too, we want to dismiss children at this time. So children, you can head out to Children's Church at this moment as well. And uh, we'll have the great migration at Delphi UMC during this time. And uh, they're going to head out to Children's Church and be ready for that. But we, we're excited about the mission team. As I said, they have some great stories to share, and I'll let them go ahead and get started this time. Hello, everyone. My name is Shelby Huddleston, and this was my first time going to Belize. Um, I think my favorite thing that I have determined about this trip was just seeing their reaction to what we had completed down there. Um, so we kind of worked um, at a church called Unity. That was our main mission going down there. Um, they had a stage down there um, that they had told us was completely rotting. Um, so that's kind of we all we knew about it going down. We didn't know what it looked like. We had no pictures. We just had heard it was rotting. Um, there was two layers on the top um, and then a front or a foundation. Um, and our leader, uh, Kip, um, he works for CSI Missions, told us that when we go down there, our biggest thing is we need to pray that the foundation of this stage was firm. Um, because if not, we were going to have to tear everything out. Um, the top had been corroded and eaten by whatever bugs are down there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and <you> see... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so the stage was very um, corroded and rotten. Um, and so when we got down there, um, every party started ripping up the top layer because there was two layers to the stage. They started ripping up the top layer. Um, and then Mike Hyman and Jack started uh, ripping up the actual main boards and they were just rotten. And we're like, okay, 
God, just just please let this foundation be firm. And they ripped it up, and it could not have been any more firm. There was nothing, no wear and tear. No bugs had gotten to it. It was so firm. And so that was on the very first day. So God was even working miracles on the very first day from ripping up that stage. Um, and so it was really great. So we ripped all the stage up, and we went and ordered. Um, it's called Plysum. It's like a concrete drywall type board very strong very sturdy very uh, weatherproof um and so we ordered that probably about 30 and I think each one weighed 50 pounds like so heavy um and so we loaded those in and we laid them all um and so that's kind of what we did throughout the week took that all up they laid the concrete plysum and then they laid linoleum over the top of that um so some of us were doing that Some of the other people went over to the school um, that was directly beside it, um, and the principal there wanted to have some paintings and artwork done to make it more kid-friendly, and so a couple of us went over there and painted um, in the girls' bathrooms and the boys' bathrooms that are upstairs for the older kids, Um, and then we also painted um, where a wash station is that they just put so they can wash their hands. We did some things to help um, do that. Um, And so I just want to thank each and every one of you who prayed for us while we were down there. There was God moments that we saw every single day, um, and it was just absolutely incredible because when the stage was done, a bunch of the kids came over, and they were just dancing all over the stage because they had never had that many people be able to be up on the stage at once because of the fear of it rotting and it falling through on the kids. So it was really, really great to see, like, there was probably 20, 30 kids just up on the stage just dancing because they had a solid stage. Um, And so it was just crazy to think that they didn't have that before, that they could just dance and praise God on and sing on and everything. So we have a small um, slideshow we'd like to share with you guys so you guys can see kind of each of the steps. And then when the slideshow's over, um, you guys or a couple of other people are going to speak. But thank you guys for everything.
All righty then. Hell. All righty then. Ah. That's why I'm gonna be frightened. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh my God. Last but not least, the Yeti. <laughs> well, not really. All right, it is. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> This trip was um, bathed in a lot of prayers. Three years ago, we had decided that um, we were going to go on a mission trip. We started this whole process three years ago. And we finally were able to complete it. It's just kind of amazing to me three years ago that we started something. But with prayer, we were able to complete it. What is amazing about this mission trip is um, the, the people who are on this team were the right people. With all their talents that they brought with them, they were the, the, the group that needed to go. Their sense of humor, their, um, <laughs> we laughed. We, we laughed every night because something, it was just a great group of people to be with. We just had the best time. We bonded as a, a family, as a team. And it was an amazing, an amazing time. When we left, um, Indianapolis on Saturday morning as we in the plane um, a, a stewardess came up and, and said where are you headed and we said Belize and and we got to talking and she said that she had been she prays before we she takes off on the plane what was um, and she said some passengers caught her praying and and they're kind of a little concerned she says no I do it for all <laughs> flights so bathed in prayer <clears throat> while we were down there um, Debbie's mom had a stroke and bathed in prayer in four hours Debbie and Mike were able to get a COVID test, plane tickets, and out of Belize in four hours. Bathed in prayer, Some of the things that the, this team did was, was not comfortable for them. Bathed in prayer, everybody was safe. Brave, um, bathed in prayer, you guys praying for us. You protected us. We felt it. And we're thankful for those prayers. We just pray that the team keeps on doing missions here. And we will pray that you will also do missions here at home. As we were coming back, we had, you had some bad weather in Indiana last night. We were flying through that. We did this loop-de-loop -loop eight around Indianapolis. <laughs> and 
somebody asked Patty about somebody screams a whatever in, in you know ex words words that you, probably shouldn't have been said out loud <laughs> and Patty says um, don't worry there's 12 missionaries on this flight you're in good hands <laughs> so um, landed and and bathed in prayer were here safe and I just I I can't tell you um, how much we appreciate your prayers and um, we just pray that um, you do you also um, feel feel what we have felt this past week thank you Oh, that's on. So I was not prepared for a service, but I did write it for this service. So, yes. Um, so, hi, I'm Hannah. I don't know how many of you guys know me, but a fun, <laughs> a fun <laughs> I snort when I laugh. So that that is another fun fact about me. Um, so one thing about me is I have anxiety, and it's a little bad. So going on this mission trip, it was very scary for me because I mean. I don't know these people. I mean, like, I know them, but I don't know them. Like, I don't know what I'm going to talk to them for a week about. Like, you know, like, Lois, intimidating. Like, seriously, you wouldn't believe Lois is intimidating, but she really is. Um, <laughs> um, but so basically, you know what? We were on the plane, and I was like, oh, this is happening. I'm like, okay. And we got to the hotel, and I'm like, this is happening. And it just felt like I was, like, in a looking glass the entire time. Well, not the entire time that point of time but basically so I was like oh god why would you send me on this mission trip if I'm not going to make connections like isn't that the point of mission trips so I was praying a lot and um I'm like you know god please help me so I can make connections like I don't know what to talk to these people about so long story short my prayer was answered praise Jesus they probably didn't like that it was answered because I kind of bothered them a lot but um I'm going to share some of my favorite stories from this trip because I believe the connections we made were very nice. Um, so basically, I'm going to start off with who I first connected with, Shelby. So <laughs> we were painting the octopus. I don't know if you saw the pictures. We're just talking about life. We're talking about things like ranging from people to prom to poop. Like we're, <laughs> um, I know that's not, you guys probably didn't expect to come into church to hear that, but we. <laughs> I believe that's what made us connected. It was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see, I mean, it's memorable stories. Thank you <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so if that isn't bonding, I don't know what is. Um, another time is I love the team's connection. When we stayed up late, we played trash. It's a card game. It's very fun. We were up to 10 or 11, and there's a two-hour time difference in Belize, so that was midnight or one. It's fine. Um, while I was definitely an expert in the game, Kobe and Lois, however, were not. They were stuck on 10 three nights in a row. <laughs> like, boof, <laughs> card games. Um, so Lois, I definitely blonded with her during the trip. Um, unfortunately, there was this moment where she was making fun of me, and... <laughs> With my brothers, my natural response when someone's making fun of me is to say, shut up. <laughs> um, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. I happened to say, shut <laughs> up to <laughs> Lois, and I regretted it immediately, and I wrote her a little apology you know, I gave her a Jolly Rancher with it, sent her on her way, like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, a happy farmer. Um, so basically, I have an announcement for my mom and dad. You guys are apparently aren't my parents. Patty is my mom, and Megan is my sister, and I am adopted to Amy. Um, Jack is my dad and the pastor of the church. So. <laughs> so, surprise. Um, yeah. And so it's just a great family reunion happening right now. 
Um, but basically, you guys probably want me to done, but I have one story left. So this does involve Jack. We're on the plane, we're from Houston to Indiana, and it, <laughs> it is taking forever to go. And I'm like, well, there's Jack. Hi, Jack. <laughs> well, then I'm like, hi, Jack, you know. Hi, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then this plane stops for a solid 10 to 12 minutes. Like, it started moving and then it stopped once I said that. And there's this little cop car coming. And I'm like, and then Kobe's sitting next to me. He's like, hey, they're coming for you, you know? He's like, what are you going to do about that? I'm like, I'm saying you're the one who told me to say it. Because I wasn't thinking in that moment. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Like, there's actually a cop car coming. We're stopped for 10 to 12 minutes. We should have already taken off. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. He wasn't helping. I was freaking out. Um, yeah. But, yes, I want to say thank you for this team. Um, a lot of the inside jokes we've developed. Um, they just helped me calm my anxiety and be able to relate to them a lot. And I want to thank God for letting me have this opportunity to be around these people, I guess. Um, even though I, I guess. <laughs> even though I'm sure I definitely annoyed them a lot with Pitbull. So. One, two, three. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to fix this mic a little bit. Um, so you've heard them all say, like, three years. We've been waiting for this for three years. That's a long time. But I would say my calling for this trip started five years ago. So I was probably 14 around then, I think. I kind of just lose track of time. It goes by way too fast. But I heard about the Jamaican mission trip and just instantly had a tug on my heart. And I don't know if you guys have had that feeling or if you've followed through with that feeling, but if you haven't, you will have that feeling. And please, 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 please follow through with it. But so I came home with my mom one night and I was like, mom, I have to go. Like this is just where I'm supposed to be. I can't tell you why, I don't know, but it's just, I feel it in my soul. Like I have to go. And she's like, uh, probably not. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, we're going to talk about this later. And that's probably one of the only few times I've told her we'll talk about it later. <laughs> um, but so lo and behold, she ended up coming with me. Um, and so then, you know, we're preparing for this trip. Everything's going smoothly. If you guys don't know, I was actually raised in another church. And they were like, yes, we're going to help support you and that kind of stuff. So go. And so everything was just going perfectly. And then we have COVID. And it was like, oh, wow, this is interesting. But, so we didn't go on that trip, but honestly, like, I'm kind of thankful because I was going through some stuff that I needed to heal from and whatnot that I was not ready for, and I don't know how that trip would have turned out if I really went on it. So then we come around the next year, and it's like, okay, we're getting ready to go, we're getting ready to go, and then a month or two before we're supposed to go, it's like, actually, no. And it was like, okay, <laughs> this is weird. Like, we're not going after, I've been preparing for this for, I don't know, almost two years now at this point. And it's like, okay, I'm not going. That's fine. Next year. So then last summer, I was told I was going to have to have surgery on both of my hips. And I was like, wow, this is cool. God, you're really taking this away from me quite physically. And it's like, what is going on? And so I was really struggling with some of that. And I had surgery in December on one of them. And it took me two months to be able to walk again. And I was like, what is going on? Like, how am I going to be able to go on a mission trip if I am not at my physical peakness? And I'm like an active person. Like, I need both my legs. And God quite literally took them away from me. And I was like, okay, man, this is not cool. And then my second semester of college came around, and it was a roller coaster ride. And I, like, discipled to some, a group of girls, some throughout my second semester, and I was like, guys, like, honestly, my relationship with God is praising him, even though he tells me no quite a lot, and he told me no quite a lot my second semester, and I emotionally was not okay with it, and I was like, I really don't know if I can do this physically, emotionally, like, I am hurting everywhere to go on this trip. And then we're coming around to this trip, and I'm just like, I, I really don't know if I'm supposed to go at this point. Like, I was really at that point that I was like, am I even? Like, how can God use me 
and I am so broken right now. How can he use me? And so I ended up getting on the plane anyway, and I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> I hope this is what it's supposed to be. Um, and so we go, and we're there. Saturday, we get in and everything. Everything goes smoothly. It's like, okay, this is where we're supposed to be, you know. You see a little bit of the city and where we're going to be working, you know, that kind of environment. We go to church on Sunday, and it's a church that is not this church. It's not a church that is like the old Methodist. It's not a church that probably 90% of us have been in in a church before. It's not a church that our houses look like. It's a building. It's an old warehouse building, if even. And it's extremely hot. So we go in there and we sit down. It takes them a few minutes to get things started, whatever. That's fine, you know, talk, mingle, as we do here. And we get started and they're just giving thanks to the Lord, giving thanks to the Lord. And it's like, wow, I don't know how you guys start your prayers and that kind of stuff. Or if you do pray, I encourage you to pray and to start your prayer with thanks. That's always kind of, when someone told me that's how you should start praying, I was like, oh, that makes sense. And so I started praying like that. And it really, like, why wouldn't you want to thank someone first, especially our almighty God? And so we started on thanks and just praising him for that kind of stuff. And then we started in on worship, and the second song comes around, and the girl that's leading this song, she is talking about how she had kind of lost hope in God this past week, and she was just like, I'm done. Just, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. And she's like, and I had to repent from that. And it instantly took me back to a moment in my car, second semester, where, I'm going to be honest, I was kind of yelling at God. I was like, I just can't do this anymore, man. Like, I don't know why you keep doing this to me, but I am done with it. Like, give it to someone else. Like, I am not the warrior you think I am. I am just this little girl <laughs> that can't do it anymore. And it just took me to that moment instantly. And I was like, I never repented of that. And it's like, I really told God, I was like, done. And so at this point, I'm just sobbing, but I'm also sweating, like, a lot, and so my face is just completely wet, and I was just like, oh my gosh, what is even going on right now with this? <laughs> but so, I'm just in a building, and at this point, like, I'm just crying so much because I'm overwhelmed by everything, of knowing that these people live in an area that does not look like America. It does not look like our small town. The buildings are crumbling. Some of them caught on fire. Some of them have half a wall. They don't have windows. They don't have doors. Things are collapsing in on each other. Some of them don't have ceilings. And these people live in them. This is their normal. This is where they run their business. This is where they take their showers. This is where they wake up every morning. The houses, some of them were quite literally made out of plywood. We build our grandkids houses out of plywood. And it just takes you back because these people are praising a God, the same God I would say that I praise in a way I've never praised him before, and I have everything. I have everything, and by our standards, they have nothing. And they praise this God so much bigger than I have. And not to take away from anything that I have gone through in my experiences or anyone else's experiences but guys imagine if this church alone started praising the God they praise which is the same God let me mind you the change that would invoke in here and in you and how you could carry that out to your communities and the people you interact with and I mean we can go on and on about how the churches have changed and whatnot but I did sit through a three-hour church service, so I know people have time for this kind of stuff, but I won't. I'll save you guys. But just going to this place and seeing it, it took me back. And it was like, wow, I have everything. And sometimes I wake up, and I choose not to praise God that day because I am mad at him. And I, I get it. Everyone gets mad at God from time to time. So we are angry. We don't understand. He takes things away when we don't want him to take them away. He gives us things to deal with, and I'm just like, no, we just can't deal with them, right? It's hard. It's challenging. 
But these people praise him anyway. They wake up in their plywood houses that are smaller than the women's restroom, because I haven't been in the men's, but I imagine it's smaller than that. <laughs> and that is their three-bedroom, one-bathroom house. Imagine your three-bedroom, one-bathroom house. I promise you, it doesn't look like theirs. But they wake up and they praise him anyway, so big. So I just encourage you guys, if you take anything away from anything that we say, that you just take a step back and realize, wow, I really do have it all at my fingertips, and I really can praise the same God the same way. So yeah. So those of you that don't know, I'm Shannon. I'm Megan's mom. Um, she gets her talking from her dad, not me. Um, so you're in luck. As Elliot would say, he's more like me, not the talker. Um, but that, that church service on Sunday um, also took me completely back, like it did Megan. Um, again, crying, tears, very early on. They just started out talking about how, I mean, immediately, the first 15 to 30 minutes was just nothing but how great is our God. How glorious is our God. Hallelujah to our God. Can you imagine if you started out every Sunday for 15 to 30 minutes doing nothing but shouting praise to your God, who is their God? And like Megan said, they have so much less than us. The service that Sunday, really, he spent three hours on this verse in Revelations. Worthy is the lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. He has given us so many blessings. Yes, I am the mother that said no when Megan said, I have felt called to go overseas, Mom. And I was like, mm, no, not there. <laughs> So we started stateside. I definitely felt called stateside. I felt a bit of a call to go overseas, but not to the passion that Megan had. And then as we talked later, like she said, um, I said, okay. I, I had to pray. I had to think about it. I had to talk to my husband and make sure is that where my heart was too. And I will say that when we got there in that church service, during that praising moment, I did. I heard God say, Shannon. This is where you're meant to be. And instantly, I just started crying. Now, they talked about we came with the skills. I'm not sure what Lois is thinking. I did not come with the skills for the job I was tasked with. <laughs> um, I work in technology. And somehow, Ben and I got tasked with raising this house, like Megan said, probably no bigger than that bathroom, four inches. Um, we had two jacks. Not this jack, but a good jack and a bad jack. Um, <laughs> Ben had the bad jack in the slimy mud, and we were trying to raise this house. And we'd get so far, we'd brace it, and we'd come back and probably lost half an inch. We'd raise it so far, brace it, come back, lost half an inch. And then we got to the point where we were down to our last inch. We're so close. And this guy Cliff comes, and he's helping us. And Owen, who lives in the house, um, he had already pulled us aside and stopped us from working for a while and told us about the amazing church service they'd had in the park the night before that was impromptu and how he just loves bringing people to Christ. And as we're trying to get this last inch, you know, they're trying to prop this jack on cinder blocks, which are breaking in half. Boards are splintering, and I'm like, we are never going to get this done. Um, and then Owen's sitting over there, and Owen's just going, come on, Jesus, let's go, Jesus. Come on, Jesus, let's go, Jesus. And I mean, like, he just so had the faith and knowledge that Ben and I were going to complete this. And I'm like, I don't think this is going to happen. Um, that jack kept popping out, and every time it popped out, it was loud. I screamed, and I was really worried it was impaling Ben. And I'm like, are you okay? Did it hit you? And sure enough, every time it popped a different direction, it popped between him and Cliff. It never hit anybody, and I'm just thinking, this is crazy. And we had to tell Mama Lois to stay away because she was a nervous wreck. Um, <laughs> she, was, she was fretting. And then the last time that jack popped out, the little seal broke, and all the hydraulic fluid you know, came out of it, and Ben looks at it, and he's like, this is not good. And Cliff goes, you know what, let's give it one more try. And Owen's over there, come on, Jesus, let's go, Jesus. Come on, Jesus, let's go, Jesus. And sure enough, that jack still worked, and we got that last inch raised on the house and got the beam in there somehow. And I thought, yeah, I don't have the skills for this, but, yeah, 
that was nothing but God, 100%. Haven't you heard some great stories so far? Yeah. My name's Rhonda, Rhonda Ladd. Um, I, I just wanted to talk about missions and calling to missions. Um, when Jesus talked about the Great Commission, he talked about serving in your area and going out and serving farther and going out. We as a church have a great calling to missions. We have a Bible school coming up. That's our close mission. In missions, you get to have community. You get to have people serving, serving each other. I got to experience that as a team member to be ministered to. In missions, you get to minister to others. You get to build that community in such a way that's so much stronger than just coming to worship on a Sunday morning. We have a mission coming up, a mission that's close by, our Bible school. What a great opportunity to serve the children of this community. We've had missions go to other states. It's a different community than Indiana. You're learning a different culture, even though it's the United States. You get to go out and serve. You get to be Jesus to somebody. And you get to be served. And occasionally, we have an international mission. And you really get to learn a different culture. So I would just like to say, this is your formal invitation to join a mission team, to be part of missions and outreach at this church. If you don't know, I am the son of a minister. He has passed, but I, a long time ago, about 72, <clears throat> excuse me, I was asked by him, what does God have for you to do? And what is your mission? Went away for an hour, came back. I told him I was out to serve, no matter what the consequence is to me. I've lived that through my life since 72. In 18, I was fortunate enough to go down to a mission trip to Belize when Lois had already been on a bunch of mission trips. And she said, hey, you want to go to Belize? And I'm like, sure. Didn't know what I was getting into, but I'm glad I did. I've been able to help people, help people, not complain about them, not this, not that. And when we were tasked in 19 to go down to Jamaica, COVID hit, didn't work. Okay, reset go do something else I kept going to Belize I could get in there been there 10 times since 18 I'm on two mission teams December and January of this coming up the deal for me is I'm not an evangelist I'm not a Bible scholar sorry dad I am a server that's all I have to do I'll serve anybody here. I'll serve anybody anywhere. But when this gentleman right here was tasked to be with me on a scaffolding, I was not informed that he was afraid of heights. <laughs> He's taller than I am, though, so he could get up further. The teams were set by Kip of who was going to do the projects. He is a wise man. He's coming back from Belize today. His plane got changed. So I'd just like to let you know we all need to serve. I don't care what it is. Where do you go serve your neighbor a cup of coffee? Where do you stay in the States and do missions? Because CSI has missions all over the country right now. The people are hurting. Go help somebody. Don't be it's all about me. Go out and help somebody. Because that's what these people have done. And I, the, the best God moment Lois and I have had through this was when we sat in the back of the bus last night coming home from the airport. Three people that were not on the team, Todd, Jordan, John Huddleston, took us down and back. 
we listen to the team talk to them about what they saw, experienced, and want to do. So open your hearts, and I'm not worried about your bank account. Just open up your hearts and see who you can help, who you can serve. Because if you serve Jesus, you're serving the world. Thank you. Sorry, Todd, you can sit down for just a second. Um, I'm going to kind of go like all over the place here because I like I don't want to talk about just one thing. So um, the main thing is is about trusting God because there was so much trust in getting here with Megan. You know that this is where I was called. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to trust you, um, Rhonda. Getting in the water, which with the sharks, which wasn't excited. Kobe getting high up on the scaffolding when he's afraid of heights. Um, just trusting that. God had a plan for each one of us. Like you said, Kip gave us kind of all. We, we did the stage. We had people painting in the schools. We took stuff to the classrooms, um, which the teachers and the kids absolutely loved. We got to play with the kids out at recess and bond with them then. Um, when we first got there, one little boy runs up to Miss Debbie, Miss Debbie. From, we remembered her from the last time she had gone, and they had bonded. Um, I mean, they know who we are. They get so excited. How many kids that first day were, was at recess? I mean, there's probably, what, 50, 70? I don't know. Kids, you know, without them out there. Um, they, we had, like they said, she didn't go into complete details. This whole area that we worked on was swampland. And basically, they filled with trash, is that correctly, to build up, to build these houses and so as a swamp land like starts seeping through, they start sinking. And that's what happened. And so they weren't just doing, they were like laying down and like in the swamp stuff. We're hoping it was just watery swamp stuff. Yeah, um, as they were doing that, you know, but they, they didn't even think about it. Kobe's like holding on to all this bird poop that's sitting on the, you know, as he, they're trying to keep the, the birds out of the church. So he wanted these boards up on the walls to keep the birds out of the church so they didn't come in and nest. Um, there was just so much, and like everybody just jumped in, and it's like, you're done here. It's like, let's go help here. Let's go see what we need to do here. If they didn't have anything, they were playing with the kids um, or talking to people about God or talking to people in bonding. And it was just, I've been on many, many mission trips through Jamaica, through South Dakota, through Florida, you know, and it's just, this team was amazing. We had so many new people who had never done it, so many people who weren't afraid to do anything. We were sweaty, we were stinky, we would get in the van and it smelled really bad. Um, <laughs> but you know what? That's what we were called for. And we trusted God to do our work and I think we, oh, and then to finish it off, like Lois had said, like literally coming down as the turbulence dropped us more than once, a couple of times, it was a very scary flight coming in to Indianapolis, which he, and I told him, I said, you know what? I said, the pilot trains for this. This is like his glory, you know? He's like, I'm gonna get these guys through and I'm gonna be the hero, you know? And we trusted God to guide the, the pilot to get us back safely, which is exactly what he did. And then everybody cheered and clapped and gave the pilot high fives on the way out because we were on the ground. So um, God definitely worked with this group of people um, we trusted him, we followed him, and he gave us quite a ride. So thank you, guys. We're going to, uh, praise team, go ahead and come on up here and be ready to uh, go. Uh, we're just going to close the service out now, but um, uh, did you hear how God worked? Do you feel the tug on your heart that God may work with you in some way? The reminder is this, you're working every day wherever you are. When you're a neighbor to the people around you, when you're sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, when you're encouraging someone else, you're on mission here locally. You might get the chance to go on a mission trip sometime, which what it does is it enhances your vision for what God wants to do. See, the thing is we come into this place where we are and we get caught up with so much of the junk what we got to get done, what we got to take care of our family, we got to take care of these things, and we have a lot of stuff thrust at us that takes us away from the mission and the vision that God gives us. 
And so I think we need scripture to remind us that. Sound and Light will be ready for that Romans 12 passage that uh, we're going to preach on today, but you'll get next week, by the way. But uh, I'm going to have you just read this scripture with me because I think it helps encapsulate everything that we're doing. And so let's just join together in reading the scripture from Romans chapter 12. You ready? Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them and pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people and don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you're honorable. Words written an incredibly long time ago that somehow fit perfectly with what this team experienced. And what if we live this every day? This is Holy Scripture that God gives to us. Let's have a word of prayer and then we'll stand up and sing our, our closing songs. Let's pray. God, thank you for this team that has had such a wonderful impact. More importantly, thank you for the impact that you gave into their hearts and minds. And the impact of people who gathered here. And the impact that's going to happen with Vacation Bible School. And the impact that's going to happen with uh, the teen camp that's coming up later on this summer. With Landon's team that's going out to wherever they're going to perform their thing later on this summer. Sorry, I don't have it down, Lord. You know what it is with the people who are going to see their neighbors this week and have conversations with them, with the people who are going to put their hearts and minds in the love of Christ, with the ones who are fueling the call right now on the tug to say, I'm going to go on a mission team. And yes, there's one coming up in December. Yes, there may be another one this fall. Yes, there will be another one domestically a year from now. But Lord, you give the mission. Let us respond. Let us respond with hope, with faith, and with trust. We ask this all in the name of Jesus, our Savior. And together, the people of God said, amen. Let's stand and get ready to sing our closing song and a bit of an ask. After this service, we do need to transport stuff from the barn for decorating for VBS. So if you help with transporting stuff, it's your first chance to serve, folks, today, just after this service. Let's praise the Lord. Oh, 
folks next week. Go in the name of Christ and serve him as you go. Amen. Yeah, he